Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you a bit about Microsoft certifications. I've taken quite a few of them, which you see here on your screen, and I want to give you my thoughts on them, what the experience is like, and what you should expect, maybe how you should train, and talk a little bit about the open book policy that they recently started a couple of months back. Before we get into that, quickly want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you for checking out my channel. If you enjoy this content, leave a comment down below, hit that like button and consider subscribing as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, so like I said, I've taken quite a few of these Microsoft exams. They have a lot more of them, but you know, I do have some experience with them as you can see here on the screen. The fundamental exams are the ones that are typically the easiest, but they're not super easy. Uh, don't be fooled by the fundamentals name. Some of them, if you've worked in the area of whatever the exam's about, you might be able to take them without a lot of study, but they can be tricky. And it gets even more tricky when you get into the ex associate and expert exams, which you can see just a few days ago, I took one of the expert exams and passed that one, and I have two other associate exams in addition to the three fundamentals. The fundamental exams are beginner exams. You know, if you're wanting to get into Microsoft type roles with Azure or Microsoft 365, the office online offerings like Teams and SharePoint and identity management and all that kind of stuff, the fundamental exams are where you'd want to start. If you have some experience in these roles already and you're just wanting to get a certification, then the role-based exams, which are the associate exams, uh, are probably better suited for you, but you still may want to get these fundamental exams. A lot of jobs, uh, as my job specifically, they don't necessarily, it's not necessarily required at this point, but they do suggest certain exams depending on what your role is. So you have these role-based exams for like Azure and Dynamics 365, Microsoft 365, and so on. But you have these fundamental exams that sit up here at the top. These would be the first ones you would take before you transition into these role-based ones, and then they have a few specialty ones. And it looks like this was last up, uh, updated November 2023, so it's pretty current. And, um, you know, some of them have prerequisites, uh, which is what this black uh, little bar is down here. You may have a prerequisite to be able to take uh, one of these exams. Um, so, you know, you want to check out this poster if you're interested in any of these to kind of build a path for yourself. Uh, like if you want to be a certified solutions architect for like uh, the Microsoft stuff, then you're going to have to kind of follow a path because there are requirements for this exam. And uh, I mentioned that this was the uh, requirement for it, and I was wrong about that. The star means that there are prerequis prerequisites, but it doesn't tell you what the prerequisites are here. You would need to click on it and go to that exam, which I'll, I'll do here to show you. And when you come to the exam page, it's going to tell you uh, that this one's part of the um, the requirements for this. And then somewhere on here, maybe we need to click on this. Yeah, here you need to have the Azure Administrative Associate, which is the AZ-104, before you can take um, this one. So a lot of them are like that, but not all of them. Uh, the one that I just took the other day, uh, this Microsoft 365 certified, had multiple different ones that you could, you just needed one of them before you could take this one. And I actually had two of them. Uh, one of them was this one, uh, the Endpoint Administrator Associate, which is the MD-102. Has a lot to do with Intune and SCCM and, and things like that. And then uh, this one, the Information Protection and Compliance Administrator Associate, has a lot to do with Microsoft Purview and anything information protection. There was a little bit about Defender on there and DLP policies and stuff like that. And rightfully so, because when I took this expert exam, a lot of the questions from this one uh, were actually on this administrator expert. So... Let's get into what the exam experience is like. Uh, I've never done them in person. I always do them online, which is through Pearson View. Um, it's a lot like I talked about in a previous video about University of the People, where you have an online proctor watching you through a webcam. You have to have a clean work area and all that kind of stuff. 
And one thing I didn't mention in that previous video uh, that I will mention in this one is Linux computers. I know I talk a lot about Linux on this channel. A Linux system, you will not be able to take these exams or the University of the People exams online. You will have to have a Windows PC or a Mac machine in order to be able to take these exams. I have heard of people running Windows in a VM and getting away with it, but they explicitly say that that does not meet the requirements, so I've never tested it myself. And I would suggest that you don't either, uh, just to avoid any kind of issues. Just get a old Windows device or get a Mac, whatever, whatever you need to do. Uh, but I wouldn't suggest taking it on a Linux device because it doesn't meet the requirements and you're likely going to run into trouble. So, uh, you know, of course, they're watching you and everything while you're taking the exam. And a few months ago for the role based exams, I don't think you can do this for the fundamental exams. I think it's only the role based exams, uh, which would be like these three at the top and the others that are like associate or expert level exams. They do have an open book policy now. And the book is Microsoft Learn. Now, the questions that you get on these tests are typically not questions that you're going to be able to answer by searching through Microsoft Learn. You're actually going to have to have some real world experience with the products that the exam is about. The questions are very detailed in some cases and they're very tricky. They try to, to you know, mess you up. They have a lot of questions that are like, you know, if you have these groups in Azure AD or Entra uh, now, if you have these groups and this person's in this one and this person's in this one or this machine's in this one and, and that kind of stuff, and this policy is applied to this group, and this policy is applied to this group, but this group is excluded, you know, then it'll ask you questions about that. Like, will this machine get that policy? Will this person get that policy? And those are not questions that you're going to easily be able to look up in Microsoft Learn. And the reason I'm telling you this and the point I want to get across to you is do not depend on the ability to use Microsoft Learn during the exam to pass it because you're not. I think in the expert exam, I went to Microsoft Learn three times, and only one out of those three times was I able to get an answer that actually helped me with the question that I had. I don't remember the exact question, um, but it, it was really tricky, and I was just looking for a little tidbit of information that might help me figuring out which answer is correct. So outside of that, most of your questions are multiple. Well, they're actually all multiple choice, but some of them are like drop down. So some of them, they'll give you a PowerShell command and you have to use these multiple drop downs to like finish out the PowerShell command for whatever the question is. Some of them are drag and drop where you're like sorting a list of things. Uh, some of them, they will give you like a screenshot of maybe like Azure of, of like the Azure portal. And it'll ask you a question on where would you click to go to these certain things that it's asking the question about. Those are the most common. You also typically have at least one case study, which can take a bit of time. Uh, they explain, you know, the scenario of the company and their current state and any pertinent information about it. And then they'll give you the desired state, like what are the requirements of this solution that you need to fulfill? And they'll ask you a bunch of questions about it after that, like maybe six or seven questions will be about this case study. So you'll at least have one of those from my experience on all. I think even some of the fundamentals had a case study like that. But like I said, the case study, I'm fairly certain you can't use Microsoft Learn during that exam. Another thing about Microsoft Learn, it didn't happen in the last exam that I took, but the one before that, um, the MD-102, this endpoint administrator one, it crashed, uh, crashed the whole exam. 
And all I had was the chat with the person who was proctoring me. And luckily they're able to like relaunch it. But I did see on Reddit that a lot of people experience that. So if it happens to you, know that you should be able to use the chat to talk to the proctor and they can kind of like restart the exam and it doesn't start you back over. It puts you right back where you were. Uh, you just, I think you'll lose a little bit of time because these are time tests. So act quickly if that happens. I didn't really pay attention to the timer, uh, but I imagine you probably lose some time uh, with that. So um, these exams, as far as studying for them, uh, Microsoft Learn is obviously a great resource, but do not expect to be able to like go through the exam path because each one of these exams is going to have an exam path. So this one here is the MS-102, the one that I took just the other day. And if you scroll down, you have this exam path. And I didn't even really go through this. I browsed through some things on my own just by searching to fill in some gaps where I felt like I needed a little more, a little more knowledge. Um, but I didn't follow this path. In my experience, if you follow this path all the way through and then tried to take the exam, you are not going to pass unless you had a lot of experience with whatever you're taking the exam on from like your job or you had a home lab or, or whatever. You might be able to do it then, but this alone without experience or any other resources, not enough in my opinion. Uh, so outside of that, I uh, certainly recommend looking into other courses. I use Udemy a lot. Um, so this uh, MS-102, that was the exam I took the other day. I used, I didn't watch his full course because I only needed information on certain things. So I was just filling in gaps. Uh, but I did use John Christopher's course, and I have uh, a couple of other of his. This SC400, I kind of did the same thing. But with that one, I went through the MS Learn all the way. And then I used his course to fill in some gaps. Sometimes these instructors, like John Christopher, will give you additional context that's certainly going to help you uh, when you go to take the test. Another thing that you're definitely going to want to do is the practice test. So most of them have this free practice test. And these questions that are on this practice test are very similar to the ones that you're going to experience on the exam. It's not going to have the case study questions or the drag and drop or the ones where you have to click, you know, where you need to go. But the questions themselves, a lot of those questions appear in the practice test that are similar but a little different than the ones that are on the exam. So you definitely want to go through the practice test a few times and get as high a score as possible before you go to take the exam. Most of them, I've taken the practice test and scored at least above an 80 before I would schedule the exam. And for me, what I tend to do is, when I'm starting to feel like I'm ready, I'll schedule the exam. That way I kind of force myself to go ahead and take, otherwise I'll never take it or I'll never finish getting ready to take it. So I'll just go ahead and schedule it. And the price here, $165 for the, um, for the role based exams. And I can't remember what the fundamentals are. I think they're like 90 maybe. Let's let go back to that and we'll double check. I'll click on one of these fundamental exams. Uh, $99. I was thinking it was 90 So $99 for the fundamental exams. And you may work uh, for a company that will reimburse you for these. Occasionally, you might be able to get a free exam by taking advantage of one of the challenges that Microsoft does from time to time. Or if they release a new uh, exam, during the beta, if you can get signed up for the beta, a lot of times they'll be cheaper, much cheaper. I was able to get one of the beta exams for like $15 because they were offering a discount on it. Plus, uh, through my work, there's an automatic discount that happens. And that discount doesn't show up here. It won't show up until I actually go to pay for the exam. And then whatever the discount is will show up at that point. But that exam I was able to get fairly cheap. And uh, the exam that I took for the beta was horrible. A lot of people did bad on that one. And I failed that one as well. Um, 
because of that, uh, they gave me a free voucher. So then when the official exam came out, I studied through the material that was in Microsoft Learn because they changed a lot of the stuff about the exam uh, based on the beta feedback. And then I retook it and passed it. And that was that uh, endpoint administrator one. So, um, you know, will these help you uh, get a job? I think, in my opinion, uh, these alone won't necessarily help you get a job unless it's a very entry-level job. You know, if you don't have any IT experience, I'm not sure these exams would do uh, do enough to get you a job that wasn't an entry-level job. Other things you could do that would help you would be to have a home lab and be able to show on your resume that you have a home lab that kind of backs up what this uh, certification says you know how to do. And I mean, granted, you're going to have to know this material pretty well to pass these exams, so I think they should carry more weight. It's just in reality, I don't think they carry enough for you to not have any real-world experience in only this to be able to land anything other than an entry-level job. But I could be wrong. Uh, different companies look at things different ways. Different managers look at things different ways. So you definitely want to definitely want to consider taking these exams and uh, definitely take the advice that I've given you here before you decide to take one of these exams because, as I mentioned, they're not they're not easy. They're very tricky. Use multiple resources when you're studying for them. If you've taken any of these exams and you have study resources that you like, you know, leave a comment down below. Let us know what those are uh, to help out anybody who's considering taking a Microsoft exam. And really, that's all I got for you today. I just wanted to talk about my experience with it, kind of give you an overview of what the exam experience is like what to expect and about the open book and Microsoft Learn. It's kind of deceiving, so don't expect that uh, Microsoft Learn is going to help you pass the test because in most cases, I don't think it will. So if you have any questions or anything, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, want to see more like it, hit the like button down there and consider subscribing to my channel. And that's it. Everybody have a great week. Thanks.